Hello everyone, Mighty Benaya here, and welcome to the Community 500 inaugural video for my perspective. Um, this is going to be a more detailed video on what my thoughts are, what my moves are going to be, and I'm recording this a little less than 24 hours before start time. So there might be a couple of changes uh, between now and the actual start, uh, depending on who drops in, uh, what countries, but want to go through what my thoughts are, why I picked the country that I did, what my starting plan is, um, so that we can have, one, uh, some good learnings, uh, so that we can all figure out what a good way to play the game is, especially in these uh, Community 500 games that really have not been done before. Um, but also, you know, to keep track of to keep track of my thoughts so that I can see where I messed up and where I did better. Um, so let's look and see where I'm at. So I am in Asia. I am north of um, India. And uh, Mighty, why did you why did you pick this specific nation? Well, in a 500, um, Europe is incredibly crowded. And the reason that Europe is incredibly crowded, um, for those of you who haven't played 500s before, look at how small these provinces are, right? There are a lot of them densely packed in. Look, there's eight in there, in that one nation. Um, there's a lot of provinces densely packed in. And the benefit of that is um, you are able to conquer through more provinces more quickly because the roads are shorter. Um, and so you are able to, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a lot faster paced, it's a lot harder, um, but it's also a lot more rewarding because you can grow big faster. So usually what I've noticed is nations that start coalitions that start in Europe typically end up getting first. The coalition that takes second is typically in Asia, right? Where you have, they're a little bit bigger, but you've got very much the same thing. Um, and then usually you'll have a North or South American coalition place third, because these are really generally pretty spread out, right? These are, um, this is about the same zoomed in. Um, as I was in those other two, and the provinces are a lot more uh, dispersed, so it's harder to get um, it's harder to get a lot of traction quickly. So that's typically how things go in a 500. Well, then mighty, why don't you why didn't you jump into Europe or or Asia? You want to do well, right? You want to get first. Well, yes. However, there are going to be a lot of alliances that are going to join in together in this community 500. And I, I knew that, and they are going to want to be in those top spots, right? I am joining this game by myself. I'm not depending on anybody. I am more than happy to work with people. Um, I'm not planning on, um, you know, winning solo. However, that's, I'm, not, I'm not opposed to it. I'm just not going into this with, uh, six allies and we're all going to border each other and then we're going to dominate the world together. It's not how I wanted to play this game. So because of that, I want to take advantage of where other people are starting. I don't want to start next to a coalition that's going to overrun me at the very beginning. So I didn't want to pick Europe and I didn't want to pick Asia, but I wanted to pick a spot where I could be useful to the number one coalition or the number two coalition in Europe or Asia. So I picked somewhere in between I picked somewhere that has big provinces, big roads, so it's a little easier to defend. I have some time to generate troops and defend. Um, and the other, th the other thing that's really good about this location, um, there are a couple of other good things. I've got this lake as a border, um, so I have water access. I can build a harbor um, here for morale boost and for iron boost. Um, the actual resources, the double iron and the double fish, are going to be really, really helpful because I'm not going to be starved for food or for building materials, which in the early game, I believe are the most important resources. Uh, most important resources specifically being in the early game, um, iron and wood are interchangeable. They, a different one is more important based on your uh, build order. Um, wood is incredibly important for building harbors and for building barracks. Iron is incredibly important for building forts and armored cars. 
Uh, but you want all of those things in the early game. Armored cars are going to be really important for me in this game, and I'll go over that a little bit why later. Uh, and then weed is always important for those barracks and for cavalry, um, and just to help grow your uh, your entire nation. Now, fish can be replaced for wheat um, as long as you have some wheat production, and so that's why I think that resource-wise this is a great spot. But then there's another reason that this is a great spot. So we've got the def defensive. We've got the overall on the globe where I'm at. Um, Long-term plan is to grow enough and be uh, helpful to whatever the number one coalition is. Maybe they adopt me. Maybe I just settle for um, third place, right? Help help uh, number two coalition uh, kill number one coalition or vice versa and take third place by myself. Um, or, you know, I'll join one of them. Um but then the other thing that's really important, this nation has two very important AIs. It has a morale AI, which is a term that I just made up, um, but I'll explain what it means here in a minute. And it has a defense AI. So we've got this two, two province AI here. This two province AI is what I'm going to use day Two because we can't attack AI day one but as quickly as I can I'm going to take these two provinces and this one I'm going to take last and that's going to boost my morale because I'm taking a capital it's going to boost my morale across my entire uh, country it's going to make my uh, troops gain morale faster which means they're more effective in combat it is going to give me more resources because the morale is higher I get more resources um, it is going to make my troops faster um, morale is incredibly important in this game. Plus, I get a couple of extra provinces. That's kind of secondary. I'm not as worried about that. Um, so this is my morale AI. This is my, the AI that I am going to target as quickly as possible to boost my morale to put me on top. Then, right next to it, this is a AI as well. It's only got one, two, three, four, five um provinces so it's too big to be a morale ai you don't want to fight an ai for 10 days to get a little bit of a morale boost because you took their capital in the very beginning or at the very end um it's not a good morale ai but what it is good for is it's good as a defensive measure i have um a an entity that i know is not going to attack me to my north so I can be a little bit more comfortable with leaving my north less defended. It's a good defensive measure. Um, I don't have to worry about a nation being up there. Now, currently, this is not an AI nation. Um, there are currently no players loaded into there. So this is one of the things that could change what I do based on um, you know, how, uh, how the game progresses, who loads in. Um, but right now... There's nobody there. So I could leave this province completely empty, theoretically. Um, I don't know that I will do that, but I could. Um, this nation, same thing. Um, nobody there. So the neighbors that I have to worry about right now, and it's a big worry, um, is uh, this nation, this nation, and this nation. They're my only three uh, borders. However... Those three are in an alliance together. Uh, they are in the Ronin's alliance. And Ronin's. And Ronin's. So the Ronin's are occupying the space just south of me. Um, there's more than those three, uh, but those three are the ones that border me. So they're the ones that I have to be worried about. Um, so I am up against a 3v1 right now. Um, their best bet because they all three border me um, and then this is an AI so they don't have to worry about that um, this guy has to worry about this guy but this guy borders uh, th this guy is also a Ronin so uh, Sangsi doesn't have to worry about being invaded at all he's got two AIs and th uh, three allies and me on his border so, yeah, he might use a morale boost AI, um, but he's, he's going to be coming after me. Like, there's no two ways about it. That is, that is where he's going. Um, FLP-122 
he may go after Mighty D Fellow, but he's probably going to come after me because his ally is going to come after me, right? So I have to figure out how to fortify at least one, two, three, four provinces, right? To prevent them from getting in. This one is the most vulnerable and I haven't decided what I'm going to do, but I think I'm going to focus on these three provinces because you can't get... Uh, if he takes this province, I can take it back. Um, but he can't blitz through if I fortify these two. So these two are the key points to hold. Um, I'll lose a little bit of wood generation, but I'll gain it over here. And the plan would be to essentially hold the line until they stop coming after me and then punch back, counterattack, right? Uh, I have 10,000 wood and 10,000 iron to start with. So my plan at this point is to take troops from this province and this province, all of them, uh, to the capital, day one. Perhaps this province, depending on if somebody spawns up here or not. Um, if nobody spawns up here, I'll grab them too. Um, and take these provinces right here with those 30 troops. Um, and maybe more if nobody spawns in uh in this country uh so maybe 40 troops half of my troops take these two provinces right easy enough day one i'm gonna build a double workshop here a double workshop here and a double workshop here um that is uh 500 per workshop um and there's three doubles so that's 3,000 wood 3,000 uh iron uh so that puts me at 7,000 uh, to continue. I need 6,000 in forts. That doesn't leave me any for armored cars. So how am I going to handle armored cars? Um, I'm probably going to have to buy some iron off the market and it's going to get expensive. Um, but I'm not going to plan on... I'm waffling on whether or not I should plan on building a harbor. And here's why. Harbors are incredibly powerful um, once you can get the economy rolling in the late game. Um, I highly recommend harbors for that reason. However, this early in the game, if I don't survive, it's not, it's not worth it to put money in for a harbor that's not ever going to be used. It's not going to pay itself back. So I think that I'm going to focus on iron production. Um, I'm going to build... Uh, I'm going to buy enough iron to build two armored cars. And I'm going to focus on producing iron instead of producing wood so that I can upgrade these three forts, right? Um, so I'll need to purchase 3,000 iron and uh, then continue producing um, each day. Hopefully, I can dissuade them from attacking me or I can rebuff their uh, their assault with level one and a half forts in those three provinces um, and then push back. We'll see what happens. Um, so I'm gonna build an armored car here and I'm gonna build an armored car here and I'm gonna build a balloon here. The reason I wanna build a balloon is scouting is incredibly important. Um, it's important for defense and it's important for offense. Uh, whenever they charge and I want to counterattack, I need to know that they don't have just a ton of troops ready to push me and that they're, um, that they're fizzling out was, was a feign. I don't want it to be a feign. When they fizzle out, I want to be able to march through straight to their capital and take them out. So that is my plan as of right now. I have reached out to uh, Mighty Fellow. And, and said, hey, we spawned near an alliance. Do you want to work together? Mighty Fellow is uh, in the same alliance as King Owen, who you might recognize um, from uh, previ previous games. And I've also reached out to one other individual. Uh, Pony Buzaki. I reached out to Pony Buzaki who is in another alliance. Um, he has a couple of different allies, and I reached out to him because I am bordering individuals that are likely going to be his enemy. So 
Um, this is going to be a rough game for me. Um, I anticipate that uh, either I will do really well or I will not do well at all uh, based on the starting location that I have. But now you have an understanding of where my thought process was, why I picked the place that I did, what my plan is, knowing that I'm going to be facing a pretty, pretty steep uphill battle the first couple of days. Um, it is peace day one, full peace day one. Um, day two, you can attack AI, and then day three, you can attack players. So I have two full days to build forts, um, so I should have at least uh, level one and a half forts in those three provinces. We'll see what happens. I'm excited to continue showing this game. Worst case scenario, I get knocked out in the first couple of days, and I'll know it by the time I uh, by the time this video is posted, and then I can just spectate the rest of the game. But I'm excited to continue uh, showing you all what is happening in this game. Let me know if you have any questions, any suggestions on uh, other things that I should cover. Soledad Gloria, and I'll see you next time.